Hello everyone, and today on Cooking with Laura, we are going to be making 64 servings of roast lamb chops. <laughs> Greetings YouTube, DJ Bonebreaker here for this 19W02 a snapshot showcase video and my 50th subscriber extravaganza I mean seriously thank you all for subscribing and liking my channel so anyways let's get right into this one of the new things that they added with the snapshot 19W02A is the campfire isn't it just lovely it produces a little bit more light than a redstone torch. In other words, j just enough light immediately to um, keep mobs from spawning. And it can also be put out with a bucket of water. And it uh, looks like... Oops. <laughs> you can put out the campfire with water. And let me grab an empty bucket here because I'm still in creative mode. Um, where are all the empty buckets? Oh, there it is. Yes, and you actually can waterlog this block. <clears throat> But yeah, and in order to relight it again, you need to get uh, flint and steel. And yeah, just light her up. However, there is one thing about the uh, campfire. Well, several things actually. One of them is you can actually use a campfire to cook any kind of cookable food items. Like, for instance, let's just go grab some, well, I already have raw mutton, but let's go grab some raw pork chops, some raw chicken, actually, no, no, let's not just do meat, let's also get some raw potatoes, and you can, you know, just, if you right click on the campfire, you can just cook any combination of these, you know, food items. You just place them there and it takes about twice as long as it does to smelt stuff in a furnace. But as you can see here, you do not have to add any fuel at all, which could come really handy. And there you go, our cooked food is starting to pop off. So yeah, big advantage it has over furnaces or smokers is, like I said, you don't need any fuel to cook stuff with the campfire, but it does take longer and you mostly have to do it manually. However, I'll show you in a minute some ways to, you know, sort of kind of semi-automate this. But the other thing is, if you try to pick up a campfire with anything other than a silk touch pickaxe, like this one right here. See, I can, oh, I forgot, I'm in creative mode, hang on. If you try to pick up the campfire with anything other than a silk touch pickaxe, or not pickaxe, silk touch axe. Yeah, you see, it'll drop the uh, campfire. But if you place a campfire and try to pick it up with the, this uh, diamond axe here, all you'll get is two lumps of charcoal. Which, I mean, is more charcoal than what you need to craft this item because... Um, let me go back into creative mode. Yeah, so in order to craft this uh, campfire, all you need is three logs, and they can be any combination of logs, three sticks, and one piece of charcoal. And there, you got yourself a lit campfire that you can place anywhere. 
Now, I did some experimentation with this, and I came up with this one, which is entirely doable in uh, survival mode, but this is my barbecue pit. It can cook let's see, six times four is uh, 24 items in one shot. And it had each one of these campfires is placed. Let me open this up here so you can see the internal workings from the side. But as you can see, each one of these campfires is placed on top of a hopper, which all feed in this central hopper, which feeds into this chest. And then I put this uh, block wall around it to keep the food when it pops off from going outside of the reach of the hoppers. So all you have to do is get up on your barbecue pit and start throwing stuff on the grill like so. And there you have it. Now all you have to do is just wait until your food starts popping off. And there you go. All of our roast mutton chops are popping off the fires and getting picked up by the hoppers and funneled into this chest. And yes, as you can see, my fully automatic bamboo farm is still bamboo farming away. And I've been getting a fairly decent amount of bamboo while I've been messing around with these uh, grills. Now this one here is something I did, it's kind of a joke, but this grill here, which involves the use of 16 campfires, 16 hoppers, and a double chest, is capable of cooking an entire stack of food at once, and collecting it all. Now, I mean, it, while it, it is completely craftable in survival mode, it's not exactly practical, because you'll need 16 hoppers plus, uh, let's see, 16. So you need a total of 48 logs, 48 sticks, um, 72 iron ingots, and oh my goodness, like. Let's see, 16 times 8, yeah, you're going to need two stacks of wood planks for making chests, plus an additional beat for this, not to mention all the uh, stone bricks and stone, smooth stone slabs, but still, as you can see here, we're getting a full stack of cooked mutton without using any fuel at all, and it all goes in that chest. But yeah, as you can see, even though it cooked and collected all the uh, cooked mutton here, and while it is doable in survival mode, the sheer amount of resources involved, you'd be better off just creating a automatic cooked chicken farm. But still, even a fairly simple one that you could build like pretty much the first day you're in survival world, you know, just uh, make like a chest or a barrel and then place a hopper into the chest and then throw your campfire on top of the hopper and then just use, use some, you know, random blocks. Actually, a barrel would act be better because not only does it require less resources, but you can oops, you can access the inventory of a barrel without having a free block above it. So you know you just use your dirt blocks here and then have like step going up. Actually, gonna need two steps because you know probably not too fussed with like half slabs. The first day you're in your Minecraft survival world, you just build up like your dirt pit barbecue thing here. And then, you know, any, like, say, raw animals that you've killed, you can just throw down on the barbecue. And then they'll end up in this barrel. 
And like I said, seriously, something you could easily build the first, within minutes of the first day you're in your survival world in Minecraft. <clears throat> now, something else you might also notice with the way that the smoke is coming up out of this thing is that yes, and there's our food. But anyways, one of the applications that I can see for use in uh, survival Minecraft or even creative mode is you can actually get a proper chimney made from this uh, block here. Actually, let's try doing this, doing it this way first. Make things easier. You just place a fancy top for your chimney so that you know you have to hide it, but then bam. And look, you've got yourself a proper smoking chimney. Or, for that matter, and here's a really cool thing about this that I'll show you. Actually, I don't need that many. I can just do this. As you can see, I have just surrounded this campfire with wood blocks. And they're not catching on fire. So that means you can finally build a fireplace in your wooden house without burning it down. And speaking of fireplaces, I've come up with a few basic designs that take advantage of some of these, you know, unique features of this uh, campfire here. Like say, yeah, you got your your campfire, and then say you want to build a fancy stone brick fireplace, you know, have your have it all set out like this, you know, with your face plate. Then of course you know you got the bit along the back. And then let's say, you know, going outside. Actually for the inside of the house, maybe use something like this for the mantle. And then of course, you know, you can take the whole thing up through your roof with this, you know, massive chimney here. And probably look actually better with like, I don't know, maybe a polished andesite slab here in front. Yeah. But yeah, as you can see, you get yourself a fully functional fireplace with a fully functional chimney. And if you wanted to get really fancy, you could possibly even, you know, put a chimney like that on top of the uh, other chimney, you know. Yes, this is a basic thing that I use for that blast furnace chimney that I made in the uh, walk last episode of the Wacomole Chronicles. But there, yeah, you got yourself a nice smoky chimney above your fireplace. Oh yeah, one of the other things you've added is this nifty little graphic when your world's loading to kind of show how the chunks are generating. I'm guessing. I don't know. I think it looks kind of cool. Okay, now that we're in our survival test world, although let me go to creative real quick. I'm going to show you how this cartography table works. So we'll go grab us a cartography table, which should be somewhere. Maybe some, yeah, it'd be under decoration blocks. Yeah, grab us a cartography table and a stack of paper and a couple blank maps. 
Ah. Okay then. So let's switch back to survival mode real quick. As you can see with this uh, cartography table and the crafting recipe is actually pretty simple for this. Let's see, the uh, if we can find our recipe here. The uh, crafting recipe for a cartography table is two wood planks of any type and then two paper. So it's super cheap to craft. But what it does is if you have a map, well let's just go create a map real quick. If you have a blank map, or I mean a created map, which we got here of our nice lovely little village that's half buried in a cave, you can then take an additional map and duplicate it. But the part that I like best about this is remember before if you wanted to zoom out your map so that it will cover more area, you need to take a map and uh, put it in a crafting table and then surround it with eight, yeah, like that, surround it with eight pieces of paper. Well, guess what? You don't need to do that anymore, even though the recipe still seems to work. All you need to do is go into your cartography table, take your map, and then place one piece of paper, and you see it zooms it out one level. So we'll just zoom this thing out here, and yeah. And then you can keep doing that. Oops, so you can do that a total of, I believe it's four times before you reach your maximum zoom, which is 2048 by 2048 area. Yeah, this map's maxed out, which, I mean, it saves so much paper. And it makes it so easy to do this. So, you know, you map yourself around a bit. And then you can go... I don't know if the old recipe still works with duplicate. Yeah, you, apparently you can still duplicate maps in your inventory. But still, you can duplicate maps using the uh, cartography table. And another thing that you can do is... Let me switch back to creative here real quick and set the time to daytime. And um, anyways, go into creative mode. Get the get if you get a pane of glass. You can take your map, well let's duplicate it first, but you can take your duplicated, this map here, put this on it, and your map will be locked. What that means is that you can, once your map's locked, as you can see, I'm exploring into this unknown territory here, but it's not exploring anything else. It's not revealing anything because the map's locked. Now, I don't know if it'll update off of the duplicate map. As it gets updated, because let's go throw that in our other hotbar thing here. Yeah. Okay, see, this map's updating, but the other one is not. I mean, this could be useful for adventure map people. Personally, I don't really find it to be particularly useful, but that might just be me. So yeah, that's all that's been really added to this uh, particular snapshot, is the uh, cartography table and the campfires. Still though, I'm really excited about the new the possibilities that the campfire offers because, I mean, that makes 
the first couple days survival so much easier due to the fact that you don't have to, you know, waste any furnace fuel cooking, like, meat that you might have got from killing pigs or sheep or what have you. And so you can, you know, save that for more important stuff like smelting iron or making torches and stuff to light up your, sur you know, your initial survival home. So yeah, anyways, again, shout out to all of my uh, subscribers. Thank you all for getting this channel up to 50 subscriptions because I never imagined it would actually even get this far. I mean, I know it's not much compared to some of the other big channels, but still, it is a milestone. Especially considering I only had about maybe 15 subscribers this time last year. And also, thank you for checking out this uh, snapshot showcase. Three shall be the number of the counting and the number of the counting shall be three. No more, no less. Thou shalt not count to two unless thou also countest to three. Four is right out. Okay. Now, if you're wondering what the purpose of this whole Money Python reference is, well, let's just say I almost forgot one of the new blocks that are being added to this, that have been added to this snapshot, namely the lectern. Now, the lectern, as was stated in the uh, Minecon and some other places, was designed so that multiple people could read a written book or a book in a quill. However, it has an additional possible use. Namely, it'll generate a redstone signal that is equal to the page number of pages divided by 15. So if you have five pages, that means each page will step up the redstone signal by three. So let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Actually, you know what? Let's try doing this a bit differently since that's rather long. And then we're going to need an additional redstone dust for this little lamp demo here. But we place and I believe that a unsigned book actually will work for this. So, yes, as you can see, the redstone signal is increasing by three blocks each time I flip a page. And then when I get to the end, it lights that up. Now, one of the applications you can use for this is say, you got three, you can say, have it so that page three, this is like for a combination lock and page three is a proper combination. So let's drop it back down to page three and done. So that would mean that if we place yeah, we place out, output right here. And similarly is like one, two, three, take off right here. And then of course, a uh, another take off right over here because like so. Yeah, so this would be for page one. Let's see, one, two, 
Let me double check something real quick. So page two, done. Yeah, so this would be the output for page two. But essentially what you could do is have the first page be essentially a dummy output, but then have any other combination besides page three will trigger some kind of trap. Oops, that's not what we're supposed to be doing here. So yeah, we could just, just take that thing there and then put the redstone here and bam. The, of course, the trick here though would be to make it so that you have some kind of um, redstone logic gate so that when you get to, if you get to page one and say pull the lever or push the button to activate the, we're supposed to activate the door or whatever the combination lock is locking out. Or page, you know, four, two, four, or five. Then it'll activate some kind of trap that'll kill whoever's you know, trying to gain interest to your secret base. But at the same time, if if one, two, and three are lit, but it'll open the door, but not set off the trap, but any other combination will. You know, I mean, granted, I'm not exactly sure how such combination locks are set up, but then again, do I look like my name is Mumbo? or Tango, or Iskal88. No, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not exactly the super redstone expert, but still. I mean, I could probably look up how to make these combination locks. But yeah, anyways, as I was saying, it has possibilities for that. Or, like, if you have, like, some an item sorting system, you could then have, like, like say the sorts 15 items, you could have 15 pages and each page will go using a similar um, redstone takeoff for each level of redstone power that comes out. And again, using redstone logic to lock out the uh, wrong combinations. You can just have like each page would be like page one, cobblestone, page two, smooth stone, page three, andesite, page four, polished andesite, is, and so on, and then press the button and it'll drop like say, you know, X amount of each of the blocks that you choose. You know, you know, funnel UV hoppers into a chest that you can pick up. Or you could even just have it directly funneled into a dropper that'll drop the items right at you. So yeah. Yeah, the so lectern looks like it's going to be a really useful piece of uh, redstone. Not entirely sure, you know, exactly how to make use of it, but still, the fact that you have what is essentially a multi-position stepper switch that can go have up to anywhere between 2 to 15 potential outputs that is actually pretty darn useful for you know some of your more advanced redstone tinkerers and personally I think it's rather exciting anyways this concludes my 19 W zero to a snapshot showcase so until next time this is DJ Bonebreaker signing off